uh, as the oldest committee member, it falls to me to chair the first two items on today's agenda. Uh, let me welcome everyone to this first meeting of the Justice Committee in session five, and let me remind everyone present to turn off mobile phones as they can interfere with the sound system, and if you are using digital devices, which you're encouraged to do, um, that they should be set to silent. Uh, we've received uh, apologies from Mary Fee, uh, MSP. Item one on our agenda is declaration of interests, and this is to allow committee members to declare any interests that they have that are relevant to the work of the committee. Uh, you have background information that you've been provided with in the note uh, from the clerk. Uh, let me start by uh, declaring my own interests. I say that I have no, uh, nothing in my register of interest that I should draw my members' attention to, but I do take the opportunity to report that I have a close family member who is a police constable. Uh, let me invite members in turn to uh, make their declarations of interest, uh, starting, if I may, with Margaret Mitchell. A member of Justice Scotland. Uh, proceeding with Rona Mackay. No register of interest. Uh, Oliver Mundell. Uh, no register of interest. Uh, Mary. No register of interest. Uh, I have two I would like to uh, register. I would refer members to my register of interest as a Murray Councillor, and I do so because I remain a member of the Murray Council's Police and Fire Rescue Services Committee. And my second one is my wife is a police sergeant in the Bucky local policing team. Ben. I would like to draw the committee's attention to the fact that I was a solicitor practicing with Brodie's LLP before I um, got elected, and I am still a member of the Law Society of Scotland. Liam. Uh, no register of interest. John. Um, as a former police officer, um, I'm a member of the Retired Police Officer Scotland Highlands and Islands Branch and a police pensioner, both of which could have some relevance. Come here. Fulton. Yeah. Registered with the Scottish Social Services Council and I'm also currently a councillor with North Lanarkshire Council and I'm on the Community Safety Partnership. That Mary Fee will, of course, make her own declaration at the first meeting uh, that she uh, attends. Thank you. Uh, agenda item two is the choice of convener. Uh, you've had the procedure explained to you in paper two. The Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party are eligible for nomination as convener of this committee. And I invite Douglas Ross to nominate uh, a member for convenership. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I would be delighted to nominate Margaret Mitchell to be the convener of this committee. Uh, thank you for that. Are there any other nominations? There being no other nominations, uh, I announced that we have elected Margaret Mitchell to be convener, and I now have great pleasure in swapping seats with her so she may chair uh, the remainder of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stuart, and can I thank the, the committee for your support. The, the committee's next task is to choose a deputy convener. The Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish National Party are eligible for nomination as deputy convener of this committee. So can I invite uh, a nomination? Fulton? I would be delighted to nominate Rona Mackay for deputy convener. Excellent. Um, Rona Mackay has been nominated as the deputy convener. Are we all agreed that um, Rona fulfills that position? Yes. We are. Congratulations, Rona. Thank you. Right, moving on now to our next item of business, which is um, our approach to developing our work programme. You'll see the clerks have issued you with uh, an approach paper. It's GS51613. So the main, really, uh, decision is to consider the planning day if we want to hold that in order to, to properly work out um, our, our way forward with the the work programme. Um, it isn't a discussion really of specific um, issues at this point in time. Perhaps that could be left to the next committee meeting. And um, once we, we get more idea of where we want to go, uh, the away day and the business planning days could really put the, uh, the meat on the bones. However, um, I invite members from uh, comments from members. 
Liam. Um, thanks, convener. Yeah, I mean, I'd certainly be supportive of um, a planning day. They've been, I think, very useful in the committees uh, I've been a member of in, in previous sessions. I think one suggestion that's worked um, in the past is perhaps to invite the Cabinet Secretary to, to participate that uh, in that meeting at a, at a suitable point. I think the issues that we would look to discuss we can um, perhaps come to at a later stage, but I would certainly be supportive of having such a meeting. Yes, I, I think that works well. Um, it's, it's usually, well, it's up to us where we held, hold it, but if it's held out with the Parliament, I think it's um, good to, to meet with the Cabinet Secretary on a more informal basis and to inform him at this point, you know, what, what we are um, thinking of and what are some of the issues that what we may want to, to raise and, and give more prominence to. Any other comments? Stuart. Um, one of the things I'd like to see us uh, consider, and I speak in a fairly general sense, is whether it would be appropriate for us uh, to schedule into our work programme an element of post-legislative scrutiny. It's something which I think across the previous parliaments we've had a pretty broadly based view that we should do some of this. And uh, not because we're trying to criticise our predecessors, we may actually convener, in my case and your case, find ourselves criticising ourselves. Uh, but if we're going to legislate effectively, we should look at how effectively we are legislated in the past. I, I have nothing particular in mind that I want to point at, and I might suggest that we invite the clerks to look at something from session one, session two in particular, that's been around for a while uh, and see if we want to look at that. I recognise it will be fundamentally difficult to schedule in because I, I know what the work programme of the Justice Committee has been in the past. And on the um, day uh, that we meet over recess uh, for planning, I thoroughly support that. Um, I venture to suggest we might consider combining it uh, with a visit of some use and relevance to the committee. Uh, so just to set the tone, we could perhaps meet in a town um, where there is a prison that we could visit, um, because that's the sharp end of the criminal justice system. And while I have a prison in my constituency and I've visited that and other prisons, uh, for other members that may be a new experience that would be you know, a useful thing, but there may be other options, but, but if we were able to have a relatively brief and focused visit to a prison or something, something else, that might be something to combine with, uh, with the more abstract planning of our work programme. That's certainly something else to put in the melting pot, John. I certainly would support that uh, um, suggestion of, of Stuart's there and a golden opportunity to visit the capital of the Highlands and indeed visit Inverness Prison, a very short distance from my dwelling house. Um, and I'm sure you'd be made it very welcome there. Kinira, I think the challenge we had in the last committee, and as I understand all previous justice committees, was that the workload mitigated against us, um, not only not addressing the issue that uh, Stuart rightly raises about post-legislative scrutiny, and I wonder what the relationship with the committee that has that within its remit might be, um, but also inquiries. And if we're going to do an inquiry, clearly, at the outset of the session rather than when the legislative programme starts kicking in. So I would like us to look at some of the issues that we became a bit frustrated with at the tail end of the last session, which was about surveillance um, and the intrusion that the public are facing in, in increasing levels. Um, and if we could have an inquiry in that, I think that would be very constructive and open a range of opportunities to examine. Any more uh, comments at this point? Mary? Yeah, it was just to really uh, follow on from what John was saying there and from what Stuart was was talking about as well, because I think, you know, reading the legacy paper, that became apparent. It seems like there are so many vital elements to this committee and being entirely new to it, uh, the post-legislative uh, scrutiny and the inquiries do seem like really important aspects that we want to be sure we'll have the time to do. So it was just really to see what the views were on that and how we handle that if there is going to be an awful lot of other business coming to the committee. Yeah, right. I very much welcome these comments. Liam? Uh, just in relation to post-legislative scrutiny, I, I think um, 
I think that's something that the entire parliament accepts we have not done well enough up until now. And I think there's always going to be an argument that um, committees have enough on their uh, plate dealing with um, current uh, and future legislation, as well as the, the, the sorts of inquiries. And I very much back uh, John in his suggestion of at least one piece of work we need to be doing. Um, but I think we can't dodge this um, in this session. I think we, we need to find a way of doing it. And whether or not it's having um, a, a, a sort of desk-based assessment, inviting written um, evidence um, in relation to, to certain pieces of legislation identified, uh, and then having a, a decision at that point as to whether or not there is enough meat there to, to justify something a bit more in depth, I don't know. But but we need to find a way of, 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 of better grappling with post-legislative scrutiny than we've managed to do. Okay. okay. Any more comments, Douglas? Um, the committee was made aware at the end of this week, uh, sorry, the end of last week, about a delayed report on the uh, counter corruption unit. And I believe the last Justice Committee were going to get this in the spring. Uh, and we were informed that this will now not happen until the week commencing the 27th of June, which is our final sitting week before the summer recess. I wonder if it would be in order for the committee to write to HMIC, to Derek Penman, to ask if it would be possible, if it's coming out the week commencing 27th of June, for us to see sight of that report or uh, an overview of the report and to invite Mr. Penman to come to our last committee meeting before the summer recess, if that was possible, to allow us to discuss this prior to our two month summer recess. Right, quite a lot there. Um, First of all, there is no doubt that the last Justice Committee, as John and I will testify, was really a legislative machine. 17 uh, bills was uh, really oppressive and inquiries were um, squeezed and it was virtually impossible to do post-legislative scrutiny. One of the, the supposed um, pluses about the committees, one of the strong points of the committees has been or was hoped to be their ability to hold the government to account to improve um, legislation and there really wasn't any opportunity to do that nor has there been in any of the sessions of the parliament any emphasis on this so I very well much welcome Stuart's um, indication or suggestion that post legislative scrutiny will hopefully feature in our work programme. Inquiries rather Rather than just reacting, it would be excellent if the committees could operate as they were intended. And we're actually looking at issues at a committee which we deem are important, should be brought to the front, and are the subject of an inquiry from us. Another thing that I'll put in the, the melting pot is I don't th I think there's only been one piece of legislation in the whole history of uh, the committee system that has been generated from a committee. I could be wrong too. The numerical expert too. But in um, 16, 17 years of, of government, that's a pretty poor record. So it's something else that our committee could look at. Some legislation that we think is important that should be brought to the forefront that perhaps the government hasn't got in mind. Um, as regards the, um, the, we've got some very good ideas for the, the uh, planning day. I don't want bids from all over the country of which part um, we should visit from the Highlands and Islands down to no doubt the borders in Dumfries. Uh, perhaps we can work that out when we discuss this more fully uh, on the 28th. So I see your agreement for that and the business day. As regards the issue that um, Douglas Ross has, has um, raised, then we all received um, uh, some correspondence this week from the clerks, um, all at the same time, I didn't have any pre-knowledge of it, uh, indicating that this report by HMIC, Derek Penman, into the counter-corruption unit expected in spring was going to be delayed and is expected now um, in time to be put before parliament, I think Mr. Penman has said, but not necessarily in time for this committee to look at it. And I therefore feel that, you know, for the want of ensuring that it was published perhaps on the Monday or in time for us to take evidence on Tuesday, then um, I think it would be a good idea if the committee agreed to write to Mr. Penman, suggested that it is available in time for us to to look at this on the 28th, or if not, and there may be good reasons why that won't be possible, at least he, he can give us these reasons. Stuart? Um, I'm, I'm 
perfectly supportive of the proposal that we bring Mr. Penman before the committee on the 28th, but I am mindful uh, of the potential legal risks um, if there is uh, to be court action, legal action of any kind that arises from the report, uh, that we need to be very circumscribed in the way in which we interrogate Mr. Penman. And one of the things I'd want to be clear about is that we ourselves as committee members have adequate briefing as to the constraints that might be on how we deal with Mr. Penman. Now, Mr. Penman is a very experienced person and would no doubt be careful to keep us within the legal bounds. So I'm not great concerns, but um, I'd, I'd like to be confident that the clerks can give us an adequate briefing in the 24 hours we expect uh, that will elapse between the publication of the report and our perhaps having Mr. Penman before us. Um, I think we should certainly in any event uh, write and make sure that Mr. Penman is aware of an interest that we would have in having him before us in early course. I'm merely cautious about whether it should be the 28th of June, but not opposed to it being the 28th of June. The only comment I'd make, whether we discuss it 28th of June or September, then presumably the same legal um, uh, considerations will, will, will have to be um, looked at and made sure there, there isn't a problem. But perhaps I can ask Peter to, to comment on this. If we're writing, we're asking, is there a possibility that it's published in time for us to look at it? We've got now 28th of May, almost a fortnight, to sort out any possible legal problems. And if the um, if HMIC says there is a particular even reason you know, why we shouldn't be looking at it, at least we've pressed it and tried to, to take evidence on a, a report which is going to lie to September otherwise, given that it's being published that week, um, and see if there's any reason why not, but at least we, we know the situation. Before I bring in um, John Peter, can you comment? Convener, all your points are noted. The only point I wanted to raise was just the factual point that Mr. Penman's letter says we anticipate publishing a report in the week commencing 27th June. He does not say we'll publish a report on 27th of June. Yes, we, we understand that. And I think our point is, you know, if it's a week and we sit on the 20th and he's going to publish it that week anyway, he should be aware we have a meeting on the 28th. The report will be available. It's late before Parliament for scrutiny. And yet I, I would envisage there would be very little opportunity other than our committee to, to scrutinise it. And that's the main point of, of writing to him to, to make him aware of that. Doug, oh, sorry, it was John and then Douglas. Uh, thank you, Convener. I, I, I would agree with Stuart on the points, and I think we don't know at this stage whether there are consequential um, legal proceedings, be they civil, most likely civil. But I think the benefit of even having this discussion, as you and I will appreciate from the last session, is that Police Scotland, who at best were... Um, unhelpful, at worst obstructive in, uh, with the committee in the last session, will be aware that this issue isn't going to wait and we will be revisiting it uh, whenever. Just, oh, sorry, Douglas. Uh, just to follow up on the, the point the clerk made, I think that made the argument for the committee that the week commencing 27th could be when we have all left after Parliament has finished on the Thursday. I know he said he would try to get it before Parliament, but I think that the Monday is a crucial date for this committee to then try and take evidence, to try and distill that report, and we are putting out an intention. It may not be possible for other reasons, but I think we do need to put that down, because if we just accept the week commencing the 27th, we are therefore accepting that it could be after this committee has sat on the 28th, and then we have no opportunity or recourse until September. Okay. Right, just to recap then, are we agreed we write to Derek Penn and um, point out the, the committee is sitting on the 28th. We note that the, it's likely the report will be published the week beginning the 27th and indicate that it would be, um, if there's no um, legal barriers to us doing this, it would be um, our intention to hopefully take evidence on them at that meeting on the 28th. If there is some legal problems, we'll take advice, um, Peter the clerks and legal and see if um, Mr Penman has any reasons why that shouldn't be the case. If he can't do that then he'll write back and tell us why but we've sent down I think quite a strong marker that um, this is an issue which we want to look at and have fully scrutinised. In terms of the approach to the work day um, that's also going to be part of our business next week. Uh, sorry a week on um, on Tuesday the 28th of June and are we agreed that we have a planning day um, scheduled in 
recess. Yes, right, that's the, the main business of item four. Um, and it's now my duty to close the meeting, our very first meeting of the Justice, we, uh, uh, Justice Committee in session one. At the next meeting on the 20th, as well as looking at the work programme, there'll be two statutory instruments, uh, two negative instruments relating to air weapons licensing and sexual offences legislation. And I'll close this meeting of the Justice Committee.